Hey there, Boots Owen here. The yellow things you see in front of you are four batteries. They're lead gel 12 volt batteries, so together a 48 volt system. This guy up here is a Victron Multi Plus 2. It's an inverter charger, 48 volt, 3 kilowatt or 3000 volt amp and 35 amp. And then there's other various bits of switch switches and stuff like that and uh, that's a grid tight solar inverter and there's another one over there. I'm just talking about the battery and inverter setup today. About almost a year ago I decided I needed to get a battery because I was sending so much solar into the grid during the daytime and a battery would help me stretch it out overnight, save my own electricity and uh, be able to use it, you know, overnight. And so I got these batteries, and these are about about one kilowatt hour each. It's, that's how I think about it. But they're uh, ninety-two amp hour at twelve volt. So if you can see there, they're ninety-two amp hours at twelve volts. Four of them, so they worked for a while, and I had them set to maybe give half a kilowatt hour of energy, and it worked. And I bought them at the scrapyard and I thought I'll run them really easy. But lead gel batteries are not meant to be cycled. And I realized that quite quickly afterwards and did my research a little bit too late. The reality is they came up in the scrapyard and they were 150 quid for four, maybe 160. And I thought, well, that's cheap for batteries. Haven't been looking at them for a while. I did a drop test on them and I did a voltage test, but, you know, as much as I could in the scrapyard with limited apparatus. That I have and they they seemed okay they checked out they were all behaving similar and so I thought that's cool I paid for them then I thought well I need to get something to run them and if you have been listening to this channel for a while you'll have heard Andy Reynolds name before uh, at the Infoworks is his handle and he's written the book on solar and he was you know telling me that I should get a 12 volt inverter and he was probably right a small 12 volt inverter to get me going but I well, this MultiPlus was on special, and the special was that if you bought the MultiPlus 2, as it is this, this one here, the 483035, it came with this fellow up here, the blue flashing light, called a Servo GX, and that's a data transfer thing. So this guy would run on its own, and it'll do pretty much everything you could think of in any configuration. It'll run as a UPS, it'll run as a... a off-grid unit, it'll run on-grid as I have it, as a charger inverter. It'll run with solar panels. It'll do lots of things. It's really configurable, but it really comes into its own for data collection and management if you get a Servo GX or some other unit like that. And so that guy there is normally about 300 quid and it was free. So I think the way it worked out, I felt like I was getting a good deal when I bought this and it worked with the batteries that I had as a 48 volt system. Now the reality is I could have gotten a smaller 12 volt unit and paid for that and it might have been cheaper but I thought three volt amps or three kilowatts is as much as I'm ever going to need so I'll just get that one now and it's a good price and I think it was about a thousand quid for that and the other thing up there and a fuse and a switch and then I had to buy some cable and I think this is 35 mil cable and that's not cheap so I bought that and you know very quickly you've spent a bit of money but I didn't mind because it worked and I could see data and it was working half a kilowatt a night for a while and then winter came and I kept the batteries topped up. Uh, you can use this to keep the batteries topped up but I kept an eye on them and if, well I got these little fellows off eBay, uh, these are the ones I had before, I had two of these, oh it's teetering on 10 volts, it's a bit of an obnoxious flashing on the screen, I'm sorry about that, they're just plain in real life. And then I got these even smaller ones like this. And if a battery was running different to the other ones, I would just put a put a car battery charger, a trickle charger onto it, and it worked just fine. Kept it going, and then about a month ago, or thereabouts, the battery on the back went really low, and I didn't catch it on time. And I think it went too low anyways, and it's just, I thought, what, there's a date code on these somewhere. 2016, which makes them eight years old. They're all the same date, they're all October 2016, I think, but... That's that's quite old, you know, eight years old, and they were probably used for eight years as backup power supplies. I think somebody said level crossings, but I don't know if that's really where they're from. 
So one of them dropped, and I came down one day, and I could hear the other three, because this this one wouldn't take any power, the one at the back. The other three, the machine, if, if, I, if I'm explaining it wrong, the machine is a 48 volt machine, so it's trying to give about 14 volts to each of these batteries to charge them up, maybe even 15 volts, depending on it. So if you're putting 15 times 4, you're putting 60 volts in. 60 volts, if one of them's gone down to 10 and is stuck there, well then you've got 50 volts spread over three, which is too much, basically. And they were they were charged, and then they started to boil. And when gel boils, it's not scary or anything, but the batteries just hiss, and they were hot. And I was surprised by that, because this thing here, this black and red cable, uh, that's on top here in my hand, it's a thermal sensor going back to the unit, so it shouldn't have charged them up to overloading, but I don't know. Don't know why it did that. Um, a bit bizarre, really, as far as I was concerned. I was a bit surprised by that, really, but it did it, and so I think basically they're all pooched, and now the second one's dropped down to 10 volts, and I haven't been trickle charging them up. So those two are on about 12 volts now, and they may be okay, but they've definitely boiled, and they're definitely eight years old, and so I think it's a matter of time. It's not worth replacing one or two batteries, and and opportunities come up for me to spend money. So I'm going to buy a 5 kilowatt Pylon Tech battery. 5 kilowatt hour Pylon Tech or 4.8 kilowatt hour. The US 5000 battery. And it's probably smaller than that, I think. It's a rack mounted unit, but I'm just going to sit it up on sit it up on some bricks probably. This one's mounted on insulating board on a washing machine and that is just a a parking washing machine so it hasn't it's up on bricks as well it's just conveniently located so that i could use a shorter run of cable and not have the batteries on a cold floor <laughs> that's why it's wound up like this what i might do is make a set of brackets and just put it up on a shelf on the wall the battery and that that would be kind of a prettier a prettier affair um i'm gonna i might have to either cut this cable and buy some new ends uh, lugs for it or crimps they're about a pound each and i dread paying for them or I might be able to come up with some other arrangement. But I've made this arrangement to fit this battery. And, uh, well, it is what it is. No, I'm just rambling. The point of it is that I got into this with a bit of knowledge about it. But too much electricity and a bit of too much get up and go. And the batteries presented themselves and I thought, well, they're good. And really, if I'd been able to find an inverter for 100 quid. But these Victrons even second hand that they're forever some someone's selling one that they bought for a camper van conversion and it's almost new and you don't know where it's come from and so i bought a new one because i don't really want to mess with them if you could get them like that abb there i'm sure if i paid anything for it i paid 20 quid for it broken um for me and matthews or at an auction and i've made it work it maybe needed new relays although so a lot of them did yeah it says relay Relay fault, repaired, one dab of solder. So one of the relays had pushed through, overheated, burnt its solder, and so I repaired that. But Victrons don't come up with little errors, not work, not in the circles I go around in anyways. And so I ended up buying one. And you could probably find a Chinese thing that would do it as well, but I was taken by the data collection aspect of it with that flashing blue light up there. So while this has been turned off for the last week, the Solic 200 has been working, and... The hot water tank over here, which I've shown in previous videos about the Solic, that's good and hot. Not hot enough to burn my hand there, but it's probably 40 or 50 degrees, and probably the whole tank is at that temperature, which is cool. So that's working. But whether the Solic will work with the Multi Plus 2, again, I don't know. I was promised by the good fellow at Solic that he'd reprogrammed it and it should work, but I'm dubious about that. I don't know that it really has. So I'm cautious about the Solic. What you really want is some kind of a Victron thing. And within the Multi Plus, there's a relay that can be turned on based on whatever settings. And I presume it puts out 5 volts or something like that to run a bigger relay or something else. But I don't know that it's got enough kick to run something with an immersion heater, a 3 kilowatt. I think that's a 3 kilowatt immersion heater. Whereas the Solic has, and it can throttle the power. Whereas... Yeah, this one doesn't wouldn't throttle the power, so you'd have to come up with some interaction. Solic doesn't interact with anything. I don't know what you'd get. If you know, tell me about it in the comments, what I could use to get the Victron to run the hot water tank. 
basically, um, before I did the batteries, I got a Solic for, I don't know, I think they're 200 quid or something, maybe more than that, uh, because I was able to find a tank for 99p on eBay. <laughs> so I bought the tank. Oh, this is how it goes. You buy something cheap and then you got to buy something dear to get it going. Um, that's how That's how my life seems to run. But the Victrons work perfectly, despite the temperature issue, but the batteries are probably pooched anyways. So, in the future, there may be bat videos about fitting a Pylon Tech US 5000. If I get around to making those videos as well. As it stands, it's the middle of summer, so we've got loads of energy, and the batteries should see us overnight. You know, these... I was trying to run these at like 20%, so you'd come down from full down to about 80% or even 85% overnight. So you're basically getting half a kilowatt out of them, something like that. Half a kilowatt hour. Whereas the lithium iron phosphate batteries, you can run them down 95%, right down to the ground. Now, I will set the Multi Plus not to do that. I'll set it to run maybe... 60% at the start or 50% and see how it goes and see how long overnight that gets me and so it could be topped up by the sun the next day but there's the potential if you know it's going to be sunny to let it run right down top up in the morning because the solar panels are on this, this inverter wakes up at 6am and starts putting out solar because uh, and so does the other one on the front of the house so there's power coming in that's going out to the grid because we have no way of storing it and that's what I want to want to hold on to. The other thing is I don't I haven't registered for a grid feed in tariff or anything like that because it doesn't seem to be worth it really. Um, if you if you know different, tell me about it. But uh, I haven't done that. So that's that's where we are. Those batteries. I thought I'd make this video before I take them out. I've just got these. I'll show you this. Actually, this is kind of neat. I think just put little alligator clips on the ends of these. Uh, the ends of these meters or not me well they're displays rather than meters because they don't really are they meters yeah i guess they are they don't record they're not recorders but they are meters right so there's alligator clips on them they're they're pretty cool i think they're a couple of quid or a quid each if you wait for them to come from the internet so they're going out oh and the other thing i didn't i don't think i showed this installation but the, they came with the right battery caps i made a point of picking them out in the scrapyard and then i made up um, the right connectors to go on the ends. So I made up the correct connectors to go on the ends, paid money for all that, and then I had a bit of copper copper bar, and I made up lovely bus bars that are bigger in section than you need, and covered them in special grease that's for battery terminals, and sure we are where we are. I'm going to strip them out now. Keep them for another day. Right, what's your experience with these gel gel batteries they're not really for this job they're great for emergency power supplies that you might use once a year i guess but not for this setup questions or comments leave them below like and subscribe if you haven't already and you could become a member of the channel and that would help to support me making videos like this that you love to watch questions or comments leave them below thanks for watching see you later